It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today I'm taking a look at Pungi or Pungi here. Uh, in it, you are all capturing snakes. You're trying to get the most snakes. You're going to be using a deck of cards with other critters on there to capture those snakes and using the help of snake charmers. But you have to be careful that you don't capture too many negative snakes, too many poisonous snakes, because they'll hurt your score at the end of the game. Uh, the game kind of sounds, as I describe it, like a take that style game. It's really not. Let me show you how the game works. We'll come on back and I'll tell you what I thought of it. The game comes with two decks of cards. You are going to have this deck of cards, which is the victory points at the end of the game, and they have three kinds of cards in here. You have the snakes with the victory points, the positive points. You're going to have these characters that are going to switch values. I'll explain that in a second. And then the negative value snakes. And so the idea is at the end of the game, if this is what I have, I've got two victory points. This character, however, would switch this negative to a positive, giving me four. But if all I have is positive points at the end of the game and I have this character, he still must switch one, which would mean this is a zero score. So you've got that deck. You're going to shuffle that up, set it on the table next to this card here. And then you've got the player deck, which has several suits, several little critters, values up to uh, 10. And then you are going to shuffle this up and deal everybody a hand of five cards. And as you can see on the back of the cards here, it tells you what the suit of the card is, but of course not the value. So everyone gets one, two, three, four, five of these. I'm just going to say it's a game of four players for our example. And once this is done, you'll set the deck somewhere. You're going to flip over cards from the snake deck here, equal to the number of players. And then you're ready to begin. In the game, you are going to be attempting to catch these cards, the ones that you would like to catch, by playing from your hand these cards face down, and then these will be distributed according to the rules. So here's how this goes. Let's say this is our start player here. They are going to play any card they want, so they're going to play that card face down. Everyone else knows the suit, but they don't know the number. And so this player is going to play that card. This player is going to play this card which notice is the same suit as this one. And then lastly, this player will play, oh, I don't know, that one. So there you go. And now the first thing you check for once everyone has played a card is, is there a suit that shows up more frequently than any other? In this case, that is true. The snails, there are two snail cards. There's a, a mouse and a cricket here. They're separate. So the one that is the most uh, popular suit will be flipped over. And those people get cards here from the line first, going by the value of the cards. And so starting from here, the seven beats the four. This player gets this card. And this player gets this card. And now every other card gets flipped over. And using, once again, the numbers, this player gets this card and this player gets that card. You would flip over another four, give everyone one new card from the deck, continue playing until this deck here is gone. The only other thing that might happen is that if, of course, there is a tie, so let me put these back real quick, if there's a tie for the suit kind, and for example, let's say they are all in fact different, like this, then they're all flipped over at the same time and you simply go numerically, or if there is two mice and two crickets, then there's also a tie, and again, you just go numerically and you break a tie uh, numerically if, um, two, if there's two tens, two whatevers, then just around the table from whoever it is the, uh, the leader for that round. So that's basically it. Continue playing, run out this deck, try to get the most points possible, and you are going to be the winner of the game. This one's really interesting to me. I like that it kind of feels like a trick-taking game, but it's not really. It kind of feels like a set collection game, but not really. It's a hand management game to some degree. Uh, the whole thing has a push-your-luck aspect vibe to it also when you are 
you know, there's a, an interesting lineup out there. You sort of want to land in the middle, let's say. You can attempt to manipulate where you think you land by following someone's suit or not, playing high or playing low, depending on what's going on, especially later in the round, right? And that's really interesting. It's a game that kind of came out of nowhere for me and surprised me with how fun it is it is to play those moments, those almost mini games within the game, right? That, yeah, I'm going to just go real low, but follow your suit. That means you draw before me, but this player still hasn't played. We'll see what happens, right? I like all of that. It's not a game that offers a ton of control. It doesn't feel that way, so I don't want to sell it like a, uh, like a big-time strategy game, right? I mean, it's 20 minutes. It's super short. Plays up to five, which is solid, but you're going to get some luck in there for sure. Having said that, though, I really liked it. I think this is clever. It's a, it feels fresh to me, and it gives me that feeling of a, of a trick-taking game, which I very much enjoy, but a quick one, and one where you're not sure what's happening all the time, you know? I know a lot of people out there enjoy the kinds of trick-taking games where you take the whole deck and deal that out to everyone so you'd know every card in the game. I actually don't prefer those games. They're fine. But I like the ones where there's a little uh, misinformation or lack of information. And this one certainly has that with the pusher luck added to it. So I'd recommend it if you enjoyed the look of it. It's very attractive, very cartoony, nicely illustrated, very good component quality, certainly. And does not outstay its welcome by far. It's really, really short. I could even see myself shuffling this up and playing again. So very much would recommend it. This one gets a seal of approval from me. Nice little card game. Very cool. That is, uh, I'm going to go with Pungi. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.